So you've asked a brilliant question. What is a UAP? Fantastic. And so today I'm going to dive in. This is not about Rendlesham, but the reason that I like Rendlesham Forest is it is the best, most documented case. And the human injuries actually point to what frequencies that UAPs operate on. Non-human intelligence. Or maybe retro-engineered human intelligence. So I'm sorry I'm talking in shorthand. I'm very close to the subject. And a number of you need to play catch up and are asking really smart questions because you don't really understand the relationship between um, Reagan and Thatcher and SDI and non-human intelligence and the five observables and U UAP. Ah! Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. So let's, let's go over some um, facts. Uh, as far as I know, and as always, I probably am talking bollocks, but it's from the best of my knowledge. I can't do any better. Well, I probably could. So a number of you pointed out quite correctly that the Strategic Defence Initiative, SDI, let's call it SDI for now on, wasn't around in December 1980 during the Ransom Forest incident. It was a Ronald Reagan policy from probably 83? No, no, it wasn't. Let me explain. Ronald Reagan is a hawk, not a dove. So Ronald Reagan called the Soviets the evil empire. Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher actually wanted to have a first strike capability because they thought that was the best way of eradicating the Soviet Union. The previous president was Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter was a dove. So Carter was looking for an alternative to mutually assured destruction. So he came up with SDI, not Reagan. Reagan inherited it from Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter is a technocrat. Jimmy Carter's real background is in nuclear submarines. He's very connected with technology, and he thought technology could solve the problem of nuclear war. Millions of dollars were already spent in the Carter administration to look for answers. Edward Teller, not my friend, came up with an X-ray pulse satellite that could be targeted on the stage of ICBMs when they're actually in space and blast them to smithereens. But the computing technology to target multiple warheads, maybe 15 warheads from a Soviet ICBM was beyond the system. And that didn't really work. But the X-ray laser in space was a good idea. I suppose. The SDI administration in the United States turned to little United Kingdom. Britain is brilliant at physics. Britain split the atom. Ernest Rutherford, oh, actually he's from New Zealand, but in Cambridge, discovered the true nature of atomic particles. Blah. But all that basic British physics research was always being paid for by the Ministry of Defence. The atomic bomb would never have gone off if it wasn't for Imperial College London, who worked out chain reactions and discovered the neutron. The United Kingdom, as I like to call it, has always been at the forefront of advanced physics. So during the Carter administration, they turned to Britain and said, what tricks have you got up your sleeve for this SDI project? And backroom boffins, probably at Marshalsham Heath, that was pretending to be a British telecom lab, but was actually a large park of various defence contractors, as well as British telecom. Mm -hmm. Well, we've always got the advanced laser system that might be of interest. And of course, we've got the German continuous wave radar that produces plasma balls in the sky. Woo! Do you want to have a look at those? You could send us some money. I'm actually being very flippant because it's not a funny subject, but that's actually what happened. The big system called Cobra Mist, which was an orphan nest, Oh, right next to Reynolds Forest, was probably a directed energy weapon as well as an over-the-horizon radar that never worked. The reason it was closed down 
is because it was miniaturised and a deal was done with the Ruskies, who knew it could be an EMP pulse generator if the Soviets ever attacked Western Europe. They closed it down and SRI, Stanford Research, moved in and said, close it, we can put it in the back of a truck, it can be containerized." And they went on to build a manufacturing facility ooh, at Martlesham Heath, part of the British Telecom Lab, to actually build a defence deployable EMP pulse weapon, which could be used in the cold. This is the Cold War, folks. This was all going on. But you're all screaming, what's this got to do with flying saucers? Well, it actually has. Now, what is a UAP? An unknown anomalous phenomenon. Well, it's unknown. Oh, that's a very disappointing answer from me. (laughs) No, it genuinely is unknown. If I had to put money and tell you today, what is a UAP? I would say they've always been here. It's part of the bigger picture of how physics in the universe works. It's a natural phenomenon and it is intelligent. But what is consciousness? What is intelligence? And that's what's being discussed today. It turns out that we probably, as humans, as living organisms, are no more conscious than a lump of rock. All that makes us and everything else special in this world, this world being the far-field world, not the quantum tiny world, is that we are conscious. And that consciousness is probably a byproduct. A weird effect of the quantum world collapsing into the big world, us, or the rock, that gives us a sense of connection. Because in the quantum world, everything is connected. But we are little islands. But deep down inside us, we feel God, or a connection to the universe. And that connection applies to us and lumps of rock. The latest theory, and it's really gobbledygook to explain, is that the wave collapse from the near-field quantum world, when it collapses, produces consciousness in the far-field world. Do you understand that? Well, you might. If you do, please write to me. Um, I mean, that's just I'm telling you what the latest theory is. And that means that an exotic state of matter, as a plasma, is as conscious as your Aunt Maud. And here's the really weird thing, just like your Aunt Maud will be self-aware, I mean, to an extent, and avoid the bus coming to hit her when she's crossing the street. It seems that UAP have a defense mechanism. They are somehow intelligent. Now, are they a higher level of intelligence? And what is a higher level of intelligence? We don't know. But the main thing that UAP actually demonstrates are the five observables. And somebody very smartly pointed out there's actually six, and that's true. And in fact, Reynolds and Forrest is the six, the five ways that it moves and the six being human injury. I had forgotten that. Thank you very much, viewers, for reminding me. The six observables have been studied. Now, are they from the planet Zog? Uh, I don't think so. I think they're a force of nature. I think they're on the planet Zog, and they're also here. I think they're a type of life form that do exist. They've always been here on Earth, and they're everywhere. They're just another stage of physics that we don't fully understand. People like Paul Devereaux have really looked at Earth lights, which are possibly UAP. They're not flying saucers, but they are a force of nature. They are real physics. But because they're so transitory, I mean, you can't predict where they're going to pop up or where they're going to hover over your car. It's very difficult. And there's a stigma associated with studying flying saucers. And they're not flying saucers. They're not little green men. They're a force of nature. But they're really interesting force of nature that the defense contractors have studied. And that's why I talk about what happened at Rendlesham Forest. Part of the SDI funded project was to look at what UAPs can do and to make human versions of them. Now, here's something that I've never said to you before. And in fact, it shouldn't really be coming from me. It should really be coming from John Burroughs. John Burroughs, who actually was severely injured by this force of nature, this natural force or man-made force, thinks that it wasn't entirely man-made. He thinks, just like in Scooby-Doo, there were meddling kids. 
us doing SDI research with plasma and lasers because that's what he saw in the sky. But he thinks those meddling kids at the defense laboratories around Rendlesham Forest unleashed a force of nature and non-human intelligence which might have always been in Suffolk and it went out of control. That's a very smart thing to say because it means that it gets the defense laboratories who knew the dangers of what they were meddling with a bit off the hook because maybe, just maybe, they unleashed a force of nature. This UAP emerged from Suffolk, which is well known for having UAP events, and a combination of Bordsey, Orford, Martlesham, and probably SRI working at Bentwaters opened Pandora's box, and that's what really hurt the U.S. Air Force Service personnel. Does that help explain it? Probably not, but I try my best. The truth is out there.